the result I, is amazing. Amazingly awesome and yes. awesomely amazing. Uh, <laughs> but we are on the yellow brick road on the path to the Emerald City. So you just think, what, what's going on? It's, it's absolutely, yeah, it's absolutely incredible. So the story behind this is that uh, we have a nefarious new supervillain called Lord Vortec who has discovered this location called Foundation Prime. And from it, he, he can then control all of the uh, different uh, LEGO universes. But for, in order to do this, he needs to power them with these magical artifacts, which are called the foundation elements. Now, these are the locators scattered throughout all the world. So there's things like the One Ring from Lord of the Rings or uh, the Red Ruby Shoes from Wizard of Oz. And so he's been manipulating these dimensions and pulling these things uh, in, in order to power his, his megalomaniacal uh, ambition. But unfortunately, what he's also done is he's attracted the attention of uh, these heroes. And so, unbeknownst to him, he's given himself the one opportunity to actually undo himself. And that's where the player comes in here. So we see Gandalf, Wildstyle and Batman, they're chasing after their friends. They don't know what's happened. They just know their friends have been pulled through a vortex. So that's the setting, but we've, what's absolutely uh, unique and critical about the game is this is a first Toys to Life game yes. with, uh, with Lego. And so, let me start off by talking a little bit about the talk to about here. Because, lo and behold, you know, not only have Batman, oh Gandalf, and Wildstyle, you've got Homer. Homer's got his buzz I cannot even believe the and combination I, I see right now. You wait, you know, this is, this is, we've just started, we've just started this journey. Or we've got Pete Vedman from Ghostbusters. Oh, my God. Yeah, so this is really the idea about it. Because in the same way that uh, kids, when they play with their Lego bricks, you know, they don't portion off like some of their Batman Lego yes. and, you know, they just, just mash it all they together. They just collide it all together. Decisive, yeah. decisive. So this is, you know, this is really the inspiration behind us. So the toy pad is uh, designed to allow you to play as freely, without rules, as you want. So you've got seven, uh, uh, seven characters or seven vehicles can fit on the telly point at any one time. And here we've got, uh, well, so, you know, poor old, poor old Homer, he loves to sleep. Of course. But he, uh, in order to get through here, we need to use one of the vehicles. So we can choose. We, let's go with uh, Mystery Machine, for example. Again, there's absolutely you know, no rules to how you get through this. So the Mystery Machine will allow us to get through the, uh, the sleeping flowers. And as we crack on through the rest of the game, we'll, have, uh, we'll, be, introduced, we'll be introduced to um, some, of our, some of our friends. So we, let's we move on with just Homer now. And what we were going to see in the cutscene was the uh, introduction of this first of these uh, keystones. Yes. So the keystones are the, of, are the elements that unlock the powers of, of the toy pad. Okay. So the toy pad not only allows you to play with these seven characters you know, in any way, shape or form, but we wanted to make sure that because these are Lego toys, you know, they're immediately you know, instantly pick up a bull and you know, want to play with them. So we thought, well, how, how can we weave that into the gameplay? And the way we achieve this is by introducing mechanics, uh, character abilities and such like, actually physically onto the toy pad itself. So we've got an, an encounter here with the Wicked Witch. Now she's going she's gonna to attack us and we'll begin to fight her with the kind of traditional methods, but then we can start building in some of the gameplay from the toy pad. So whilst we've got um, you know, loads of toy pad mechanics to show you, it is important to stress that it is a typical Lego game. Okay. You know, the guys at Traveller's Tales have done their, their unusual, you know, epic investment of time and love and resources to make sure that this is the kind of action-adventure, uh, puzzling, exploration, collecting experience that you get. But on top of this, you know, we've got something new here as well. So Unikiss has been uh, taking out the flying monkeys pretty well, but here we go. So we've got the Wicked Witch is casting a chain link spell on us, and so we can't move. There's nothing, we, no input into the controller that helps. Yeah. So we have to move our character from the one side of the portal over to the other. This and is that so will break crazy. The spell. I have never seen this before. Yeah, this is, this is exactly right. So it's what kids would do. So when they're, you know, they're playing with their toys, they're picking up, they're playing with them, they're swapping around, and it's that tactility that we really want to kind of generate within the game. So, so you've got your, uh, you've got your you know, seven characters, you've got the ability to match these up in any way, shape or form. I always like to say, you know, you can play who you want, where you want, how you want, when you want. It's, it's, there, are, there are no rules when you're getting through. But I think what we should do is uh, quickly uh, skip on now, because time is depressing and there's so much for you guys to see. So by moving on, what we're going to show you now is, there would be no point in creating a Lego video game with actual Lego toys if there wasn't some actual building within yeah. it. 
So every single one of the characters that comes with the game comes with an associated vehicle. We've got so Doctor Who comes with his TARDIS, Pete Bateman comes with his ghost trap. Oh, this is so cool. Uh, and every one of these uh, vehicles has been designed and built by the guys at Lego Group. And each of them can be rebuilt in a number of different ways using those same elements. So oh here James, James is going to upgrade the Batmobile to the Bat Blaster. And there are proper building instructions, as you'd expect to oh see from a Lego game. That will show you brick by brick exactly what you need to do to I swap just have this around. From my and now it's amazing, isn't it? This really, is really cool. Yes. Can, you know, so we can upgrade this, you know, the vehicles, and with the currency that you collect through the game, you get those tangible rewards that not only can you just upgrade speed, power, weapons, and armor, you can actually physically change your Lego toy and rebuild it. So actually, here's one. Here's what we prepared earlier in the classic TV style. We could, we could build these, we're pretty good at them. But as time is short, we've now upgraded our Batmobile to the Bat Blaster. Oh, wow. And the Bat Blaster will be summoned up in front of us, and we get new powers and abilities associated with the upgrade. So here it's going to use its sonic cannon to detonate the Lego gas in order to us to uh, uh, turn on the generator, activate the gateway, and show you one last quick thing before, uh, before we have to dash, which is you know, something I know all the, all the viewers are going to be absolutely stoked about. So, by jumping through here, collecting our studs, we should be uh, emerging into a, a new realm. So there are 14 levels within the game, and each one is based around an IP, and this is our version of a Lego Aperture Labs. Oh my god. <laughs> so there's the end, old age question of, of, is there a cake, is the cake a lie? And I'd like to say that we have an answer, or at least an answer in the Lego universe yes. to, uh, to that. And as you get to play through the game, so let's uh, skip on to the cutscenes to show a quick, quick bit of gameplay. So we have our various different Aperture Labs, that Glados, again, I mean, it's been an absolute privilege working with the guys at Valve. I mean, they've been hand in glove with us. It's been an absolute, you know, collaboration and we've loved it. So you've got more toy pad mechanics. Uh, uh, Wildstar has a relic detector that will uh, activate this. But what we're going to just quickly show you is if we have the uh, Bat Blast board up, in, on the uh, pad in the center, we can see a keystone. Yes. And the keystone is what gives you the ability to control the toy pad. So previously you saw how the Wicked Witch used the toy pad, the mechanics against you. You get to use these throughout the game. And as you progress through the game, so there are more and more of these abilities become open to you. So this is our shift ability. And it's really simple, it's really straightforward. It's a, a color combination puzzle between what you, well, the colors you see in game, the colors you see in the toy pad yeah. there, and actually what's on here. So in order to get through the, uh, the doorway, We'd need to first off let's move uh, uh, whilst I'll through the pink pink hole. We can't get into that any other way. Okay. Much to Glados's grievance that you know we are breaking all her rules. But then that's the point of this game. Yeah. We always break rules. And then from here we can switch to Gandalf. And Gandalf has a you know the, obviously the portals can materialise anywhere. There's it's a Lego game. Why should you always walk on the floor? You end up walking on the ceiling, walking on walls, all over the place. But Gandalf can use his power here to uh, pick up and uh, levitate the cube and drop it onto oh, the, uh, so cool. the 500 megawatt aperture science heavy duty super colliding super button. And we are through. So that, that's just, you know, a, the tiniest flavor of what we have on option. So you know, we have all these toys, you know, we've got a massive game, there's all the adventure worlds, every, every character, every IP comes its own with adventure world. Nick, my mind is like Sorry, yeah, yeah. blowing up right uh -huh. now. I mean, not only are you incorporating, I mean, this toy to life feature, you're also taking advantage of each character's different abilities. Yep. You have to think about where the, the, the different puzzles that you have to solve. I mean, my mind is literally, I've never seen this combination of different features in one game before. Yeah, yeah. It's been, it's, you know, it's been an absolute privilege it, and, uh, to work with all these guys. Uh, ev everyone's, you know, and you know, justifiably has uh, designs for real authenticity. So from each of the portals, whether or not it's Springfield or Doctor Who or, or, or wherever you want to go, you'll know that you'll have an authentic uh, Lego recreation yes. of, the, of the world that you can play in any way, shape or form you like. This is so crazy, and I'm sure that people watching online, if they want to know more information, where should they go? And okay. I believe you said uh, the release date is September of this year. End, end of September. In, in yes. Germany, it's October 1st, okay. so end of September, okay. start of October. Yeah, and if you go to lego.com forward slash dimensions or, or, search, or search us for Twitter or Facebook, you'll find us. All right, well, thank you so much, Nick You're and welcome. James, for the gameplay that you've showed us today. Uh, I am so excited about the game, and make sure to check that out online.